Hi, everybody. It is May 29, 2019. I would love to go on uh, and start on other problems that we are facing, but this is ongoing. People are losing their homes. People are losing their livelihood. Wildlife is dying. Um, people are dying. And um, I, I just don't see anything more important than what I am focusing on right now. And I just, I know myself, I'm not going to be able to get off it until it stops. Um, and I'm saying that because I have subscribers sending me, you know, a lot of information about other, you know, subjects. And if I find the time, I will post on those other subjects. But right now, there's nothing more pressing than so many people who are in danger. Have you read articles and listened to these news reporters talking about the flood? And I've been hearing more and more they saying, well, it's interesting because there's so many contradictions and I sure wish people would listen carefully or read carefully uh, the information that they are taking in to their brain. Okay, we hear unprecedented, unprecedented flooding. And then you'll hear, well, it was like the 1993 flood. Well, wait a second, you said it was unprecedented, which means it never happened before. Then they compare it to the 1993 flood, or the 1943, or 100 years ago. And I think they're throwing in time periods now, decades ago, 100 years ago, because they don't want people to think that this is weather modification, that man could possibly be doing this, the geoengineering, the weather modification. They want people to believe that this is natural. Interesting, though, that they're saying that this is caused by climate change today, but then they compare it to a flood 100 years ago, uh, or in 1993, or, well, we weren't having those problems then, so how could this be climate change? Oh, well, guess what? The weather modification has been going on for a lot longer than most of us realize. I've posted on this before. Uh, 1915, San Diego hired Charles Hatfield during a drought. Charles Hatfield, um, convinced uh, them that the city council of San Diego convinced them that his chemical concoction that he would shoot into clouds would produce rain. Well, guess what? It did. January 1, 1916, the rains began, continued for one month, 30 inches, tremendous devastation. Uh, here, the floods destroyed the dam, washed out roads, lifted rail tracks, caused property damage across the region, killed an estimated 14 to 50 people. And the city council then claimed the floods were an act of God. Ah, eh, we're not going to mention Charles Hatfield. It's been going on for a lot longer. So those of you who leave those comments, that I'm so many are leaving such obscene comments. I don't know what the hell is going on, but they they get deleted. But I'm a nut job. Oklahoma has always had tornadoes. Kansas always had tornadoes, and we have no clue how long uh, they have been controlling these extreme weather events. What's unprecedented is it's extreme every day now. That's the unprecedented part every day and yes more flooding more tornadoes st louis prepare for severe weather tonight illinois cincinnati as well oklahoma um, and other areas but denver is preparing for flooding cincinnati st louis and uh, illinois cloud city they're all preparing for flooding um, this is going to be ongoing 
This, I believe, is going to go on for at least another four weeks, at least. And those who leave comments about how it's an attack on red states, or it's an attack on white people, or it's an attack on Christians, I, I don't understand how it is that you have determined that. Uh, this is an attack on, well, it's the world's people, but here in this country, they are reshaping this country, reshaping it into mega regions. They want people out of the gray areas, that map that I have shown often. Uh, they don't care. Christian, uh, non-Christian, Gentile, black, white, don't care. Republican, Democrat, do not care. You think, if you think these psychopaths that really are beyond comprehension care about anything but their own agenda, if you think that they're divvying up, okay, this state's a red state, we're going to take it out. No. They have an agenda and skin color, uh, what somebody's belief system is, where they're living in a red or blue state, don't matter. All they care about is getting their evil agenda uh, implemented and accomplished. So, 1915, massive flood, San Diego, caused by weather modification. This is going on all over. I can't tell you how many videos I am coming across, coming across where people are getting so fed up that their streets, every time it rains now, they have to deal with flooding. City residents say they suffered flood damage and they want MSD to cover their bills. Okay, MSD is the Metropolitan um, Sewage or Sewer District in St. Louis. News 4's Ray Preston took their concerns straight to MSD. For those living in the 3800 block of Eiler, there's no doubt flooding was an issue last Thursday morning when strong storms pushed through St. Louis. Floodwaters were up to the door handles on some of the cars on the street. All this was just immersed with water. La Queen Rollins' basement started to fill with water. Next door, Amanda Gibson had to scramble to move her car out of the floodwaters. I have a thousand dollar deductible for my car. My boyfriend's car doesn't work. We don't have the money to buy a new car. Um, our neighbor's cars aren't working and MSD is telling us that it's not their problem. I very much see this as their problem. Gibson says in the last year and a half she's lived here, high waters from heavy rains are a constant problem. It's been ridiculous. It's, it's an ongoing issue. We took their concerns to MSD. We're told the area got more than two inches of rain in about 45 minutes, more rain than the storm drains could handle. The floodwaters are considered overland flooding. That's something that MSD says it is not responsible for. We only handle water that comes in to people's inner people, inner people's homes through the sewer system. So if there's a water, if you're experiencing a water backup that's coming in through the sewer system, that is something that MSD would address. But those we talked with on Eiler say their fight isn't over yet. This would have never happened. I would have never had a problem if their sewers worked. Now either they're going to fix the problem or maybe we all need to get together and get a lawyer and sue them. Okay, this is happening across the board now. Now, two inches in 45 minutes. Well, that's called a rain bomb. Weather modification, please look into it. But why are We've seen so many areas now, regardless of uh, urban, suburban, rural. Streets, they get rain, and for some reason, the rain just doesn't drain. Um, and they claim that it's because of the massive amount of rain that it overwhelmed the sewer system. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I find that hard to believe. And yeah, um, every time I see one of these broadcasts, I'm reminded of my trip to Baton Rouge and interviewing those who got flooded out. And they were saying 
dead closed. The sewage, the, the uh, sewer drains, they closed them. Okay. So, here we go. The Arkansas River has reached its highest level in recorded history. That row of trees is typically where the riverbank is. Look at where the water is now. The Game and Fish Commission is patrolling the waters and brought us along. This street in Fort Smith is under five to eight feet. Homes are still taking on water. I'm not sure that uh, we'll ever see what we saw before the flood. Um, I think that it will change the landscape around here. People may not come back. Those who have been spared are nervously watching the levees, which for now are still holding. What are going to be the difficulties going forward? Well, the, the bad thing is it, it just seems to keep on raining. And that has people downstream preparing to leave. You just go through this anxiety of what's going to happen when it gets here. But it's also like Christmas because you just prepare until the big day gets here. People here are getting the last thing they needed today, more rain. And officials do not expect the river to start receding until possibly this weekend. And even then, very slowly. Margaret? Well, this is Pine Bluff, Arkansas. There are so many towns under water, under water, and homes under water, and more are coming. Uh, more flooding is coming. Yes, more severe weather, more rain. Look at this. And again, I want to. Um, preface that every video I am showing you different areas. So, <laughs> this guy, I'll, I'll leave him for last. Spillway, Louisiana, wildlife. Flooding from the Morganza spillway will have a negative effect on surrounding wildlife. Danielle Garcia joins us live in Butte La Rose with more on the impact. Danielle. Jim, a big part of the decision for a soft opening of the spillway is to help give wildlife more time to seek drier land. And the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries is preparing to see a major impact from flooding. When the spillway opened in 2011, the rushing waters took a toll on wildlife. A lot of snakes. I saw snakes too. You saw snakes? Yeah. Over the past few months, Leroy Groh and his family have seen more wildlife in his Stevensville neighborhood, like this deer struggling to get out of the flood water. The deer are sick and hungry, and the squirrels and raccoons. Don't feed them. Don't get them accustomed to, to being fed. Just stay away from them and, you know, let them, let them be because they're, they're, they're not in familiar habitat. The main animals of concern are bears, snakes, alligators, deer, hogs, and turkeys. In 2011, LDWF reported roughly 1,600 deer died as a result of flooding. That's 30% of population in that area. And as for turkeys, LDWF reported that turkeys were largely impacted by the 2011 flood, as most of the population did not survive and expect a similar result this year. In 2011, we didn't, it was pretty harsh. We didn't think we'd see it again. I didn't think I'd see it again in, in my lifetime or career. And here we are again, eight years later, and we're having it again. But, you know, it's just part of living in Louisiana and part of nature. Sorry, buddy, it is not part of nature, not what is taking place. Right now, could you please do some research on weather modification? Please, please, listen to this guy. 
few weeks in the United States, we've been talking about two big weather stories, the frequency of tornadoes and also widespread flooding. And the two are somewhat tied together. We've had a very strong jet stream moving through the middle of the country. The jet stream, an area of strong winds high in the sky, helps to guide storm systems. So if the jet stream stays over one location too long, then you get a lot of storms over the same area. Uh, so that's led to frequent rain. But also when you have very strong winds, very fast jet stream, that can increase the risk for severe weather as well. So that's one of the things we've been watching here as far as the severe weather risk goes. But then there's also been another contributing factor to this as well. The warm air in the southeastern United States has been pulled up and also there's been an influx of tropical moisture too. That has allowed for heavier rain and also increase the severe weather risk. So that's enough for Americans to say this is what is causing it. That's it. And they won't look into uh, what really is causing it. That jet stream, boy, this guy doesn't know that we have technology today that can control the jet stream. And they have been controlling the jet stream for a very, very long time. He doesn't know that. All right. Yeah. It's really been remarkable watching what is taking place on radar. Now, whatever the hell is going on, South Carolina, Florida, uh, Panhandle, Alabama, I don't know. But this has been going on now. Every time I go to radar, I see massive frequencies blasting through South Carolina, North Carolina, periodically Florida, I have been seeing frequencies that I have never seen before in Florida, and I should pull up uh, one of the videos that I captured earlier, which I will. These are massive, powerful, extremely low frequencies blasting away here. And microwaves going across the South Carolina coast. Um, microwaves that you can see right on the periphery of this storm. Oklahoma, did you get a lot of rain? Texas, you had tornadoes today. Um, they're really doing it, these, these. Arkansas, now it's going into Kentucky. Um, All right, and I saw it very bizarre that this, all right, so it's gone now. Uh, still somewhat, look how defined the precipitation is in Northern California. Now, I do have to pull up that. Now the square is still here. You've got a square of pockets of precipitation. A square, look at these beams going from Nevada. But this is a square of just dots of precipitation. Now, our jet stream is going bonkers. Going, it's all over the place, which that guy in that news report did not show us. He's seeing just one jet stream. Uh-uh. There is something very wrong with the jet stream right now. Well, first I want to show you what was happening at uh, 2.20 p.m. on the East Coast. So it was about 11 o'clock California time. Um, let's play it. It's unusual to see these extremely low frequencies being set off at, well, your time, 11 o'clock. Look at the power of our Doppler radar at 2 in the afternoon. Yeah, it is unusual because they usually fire up, well, unless 
they have a raging storm, but they usually fire it up like from 11 p.m. my time, so East Coast time. Um, yeah, lots of frequencies at play. Now, that's what it was at 2 o'clock this afternoon. But did you see those massive frequencies in Oklahoma? Look at this. Okay. Yep. South Carolina, still extremely low frequencies being set off into northern uh, North Carolina. Look at this. I mean, it's been... It's even hard to to watch this, but I've never seen these extremely low frequencies coming out of Florida like this. So something's going on. It's clear that something is going on. And yeah, we had, let's see. I can. I mean, the frequencies at play, they're right smack in your face, which means they're right smack in the face of meteorologists. And they're saying nothing. Nothing. Idaho, Montana, uh, North Dakota. Look at this. Look at these frequencies moving through uh, this storm. This is Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas. You've got these little bits of storm being hit with frequencies um, And th this now, look, I've been watching radar for eight years. I've never seen anything like it, like what I am seeing now. With all of the frequencies at play, and remember, I am going to read some of that patent that I wanted to read earlier, weather modification by artificial satellite. And they talk about using all different types of frequencies and that is what we are seeing today all different types of frequencies at play so this was at 917 um, oh I'm sorry wait a second all right I apologize the last capture was at 2 in the morning not in the afternoon. This was at 9.17 a.m. So it was 8.17 uh, in Texas, in Oklahoma. Look at this very defined precipitation. And look at these frequencies. They have been going, ongoing, for now about I'd say at least 36 hours, maybe 48. So this is what they were creating in Texas. Look at the frequencies at 9, well, for your time in California, it was uh, oh, 6 a.m. And they're being set off powerfully. How are you guys feeling? My God. How are you guys feeling? You in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Look at these frequencies. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, they might be keeping all of the storms away. We've got the heat wave. And yeah, they can inject frequencies into the atmosphere and create heat. We're, we're kind of like not only living in a psychiatric institute, but we're living in a microwave oven as well. 
I've never seen Florida so sparkly. Um, yes, we get the heat wave and you guys are getting massive storms. And of course, yes, you can see the uh, the frequencies at play. You can see the Nexrad harp rings. All right, I've gone through this way too many times. Right there, the high frequency being emitted from Doppler radar. This relates to the patent that I will be reading from. Um, so this is the capture that I took, and I took this at 8.30 p.m. East Coast time, 5.30 p.m. Northern California. Will you look at this? Um, bizarre. It's bizarre. I, I, it, well, we understand that they're using frequencies, that they can, with the frequencies, they, that's why we are seeing defined uh, lines of precipitation. But, you know, anybody should be able to look at what's happening in Northern California to recognize, okay, something is very off with this because this is not how Mother Nature operates. Not at all. And that was a square of bizarre blips of precipitation. Look at the outline right here. Nice square. All right. Um, You see microwaves being set off right here and extremely low frequencies. They're working these storms, boy. Everybody should be talking to their local meteorologist asking why are they neglecting or ignoring a huge factor, weather modification. Look at how squared off this storm gets around New Jersey. Right here. Um, look at these frequencies being set off. I got a comment from a subscriber in New Jersey and they were talking about how bizarre the sky looked. So, um, look at this little blip <coughs> that just erupts in North Carolina and nice round piece of precipitation. You know, I look at that and I, I see artificial intelligence. We're in trouble, guys. We're in big, big, big trouble. So, um, I do want to show you this. Now, I took this, look at how the clouds are moving. First of all, can you see the microwaves? The ripples in the cloud. Look how nice and defined the cloud top is, but the bottom, they're not moving. It's like the top is moving and the bottom layer of clouds are remaining stationary. 
These guys just don't move at all. Um, did I go to other areas? Yes. This cloud is stationary, not moving at all. Clouds on top moving quite fast. Clouds that are off the coast not moving. Um, something's very wrong here. Now, with the frequencies, can they make that happen? Yes. Have you noticed that when you are outside and suddenly you'll see clouds going by, but, well, there are clouds that don't move at all. And when you see these uh, very defined lines, you know that these clouds are artificial. Artificial. Oh, Alberta. I hope the fires were contained. Um, Alberta is having fires. Look at the clouds here in, up in Canada. Now, please, you see all of the microwaves all over. Very clear, all of these ripples. They're using microwaves, and they're also using high frequency heating, and they're also using extremely low frequencies. But you'll see an extremely defined rectangle suddenly appear right down here. Here it is. And, you know, it, it's not, God, man, I wish we could get through with people. I really do. It's just maddening not to be able to get through. So, come over to this site, College of DuPage, and you will see how bizarre our jet stream is. Um, there was something happening here. Don't know if it's a glitch or if that's a massive pulse of a frequency. And that's right off of North Carolina. And I do go into it, so... Boom. I don't think that it could be a glitch. Alright. I do want to show you one more um, and this was at 8.30 p.m. Uh, look at this. These extremely low frequencies with the high frequency heating that this is Oklahoma, this is Texas, North Texas, right on the border of Arkansas and Oklahoma. The next red harp rings are going through this entire storm, and the extremely low frequencies are, well, some are constant. Some are constant. Um, I hope everybody was safe. I, <laughs> well, no, some people weren't. Some people weren't. And this is um, Tennessee, so Arkansas, Missouri. These, I've never seen it like this. They're all out now. They are all out, boy. I've never seen so many of these rings intersecting. And you can even see it in the little blips of uh, 
well, I guess these indicate massive storms. Um, but all of this is coming from electromagnetic energy that they are pulsing into these storms. Look at all of the microwaves down here, which quite visible. All of the rippled precipitation, microwaves, high frequency heating, extremely low frequencies, and uh, it's going through every friggin' every storm that's happening in this country. Okay, so it's already 35 minutes, um, and I'm, you know what, I'm, I am going to link below to the um, patent. I'm going to read it in another video. I do want to just see what, look, our jet stream. All right, can you see? And it's, you have the jet stream going up north. Then you have a jet stream going uh, west. You have just a confluence of energy taking place in the west. None of this is good. None of it. Which way is this jet? All right, so you have the jet stream going down the coast, the west coast. You have here these very defined lines that are moving east, but this isn't moving east. So they've installed, uh, I don't know, a high pressure system or they've done something because th all of this is now going up north clouds being created, but this is going down south. They have so uh, destabilized our natural processes. This is not good. It's not good. It's really unbelievably dangerous what they are doing. So, and you see, it's almost like the jet stream is being ripped apart in two. Look at all of the clouds that are taking, uh, are moving very quickly, whipping around to the east. Look at all of the microwaves at play. Um, and here, there is, this is not moving. It breaks apart. It takes off north, east, in a northeast direction, north, northeasterly direction. But this now starts moving west. Look at how nicely defined that is. Um, and I also think that they are generating clouds. They might have their power plants operating. Or the atmosphere is so loaded with all of the chemicals that they hit them with frequencies. And yeah, they can cause clouds. Look at all of the frequencies in play here. But what is going on with these clouds that they are just, some just sitting stationary, some pulling off and going in another direction than the jet stream. All right, this is, this is not good. It's so not good. Um, all right, guys, let me just briefly go through this. 
They evacuated their home because of flooding, only to get hit with a tornado. Nice, huh? Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. They dodged one disaster, ran straight into another. They were first time home buyers. Heavy rains bring more flooding and road closures to southwest Iowa. And guess what? The breach that occurred uh, that I showed that I posted videos on, oh, what was it, six weeks ago? They have not got that breach fixed. So uh, the county is left with no protection from flooding earlier this spring because of the breach. Uh, it was a 1,200 foot breach on a levee. And the Army Corps of Engineers prioritized to, to fix it, but they had to stop working because of the rain. Because of the rain. So there's no protection. Flooding is coming to Hamburg. Once again, double whammy for the folks in Hamburg, Iowa. And storms damage trees, roofs, and North Fort Worth. Texas, what a surprise. And Arkansas, residents assess flood damage after massive storm. After massive storm today. Devastating the central United States, and st more storms are on the way. More than 50 twisters may have touched down across eight states, stretching from Idaho to Ohio. Correspondent Matt Finn is in Fort Smith as the Arkansas River is twice the level it was just 10 days ago. Good evening, Matt. Good evening, Brett. Well, for days now, people here have been on edge, waiting for the Arkansas River to finally stop rising. We're told right now it is cresting at an all-time high of 40 and a half feet, but unfortunately right now, once again, it's heavy rain, and we are in another flash flood watch. We've got two pumps there, two pumps here, and we've got six pumps over there. The raging Arkansas River is up to rooftops in this Fort Smith neighborhood where Army veteran Tim English's living room looks like a pond and pumps are forcing water out of his home. It's pretty devastating because we put a lot of time into decorating the home and having a comfortable area. This was all carpeted. 87-year-old Vernon Cooksey had carpet in his home ripped up and the house cleared. The stress has been tremendous, but... Um, I'm a Christian, and I've got an awful lot of tremendous family. The Arkansas River has been rapidly rising for days. Today, finally, some relief. The record high crest now stands to be about a foot lower than the forecasted 42 and a half feet, but more rain fell throughout the day. Police say on Tuesday, a 64-year-old man was found drowned in his car. Tuesday marked 12 consecutive days of tornadoes across the U.S. and more could be on the way. Huge tornado! This evening, about a dozen people are recovering from injuries in Lawrence, Kansas. And then all of a sudden I heard stuff flying around up above me. And then we just waited until the freight train subsided. One person is dead from a tornado in Ohio. It was raining pretty bad and the winds were going kind of crazy, but all of a sudden it was just like a massive freight train just coming through the area. And high winds from a twister ripped this shed from its foundation in eastern Pennsylvania. We have severe window damage, roofs ripped off, trees on top of cars, um, no electric, no gas. Brett, there has already been substantial devastation across northwestern Arkansas. All of this water is now headed down to the state capital of Little Rock, and the governor has requested that the president declare this a federal disaster. All right, guys. Well, uh, it's every day, and I will be doing another video on a really important My highlighting came off, so I've got to do it again. Uh, look, here, patent describes uh, lightning and thunder and how 
They can replicate it using high frequency sound waves such as radar and microwaves. Okay. Um, mainly it's a military weapon and they can use it for weather modification. High energy weapon, very high energy weapon, capable of great damage if not used properly. And weather modification by artificial satellites. So I'm going to post another video right after this one. I guess I should do a part two and please circulate this information. Very important. Energy beams discharged at specified locations. Yes, media at these locations and the media through which the energy beams pass absorb these energies and change them into heat and a whole lot more. All links are below.